Welcome to episode 32. From somewhere next to the road. Yes. We don't know the town we stayed in last night. We arrived late. Players on Four Wheels want to share our adventures on Patreon and YouTube. Join us as we travel our wonderful world. Share our posts. Louis and Karin would love you to experience adventure people places. Subscribe to our Patreon page or YouTube and come along on our adventures. So we're sleeping in um, like a truck stop um, place. Um, gives us new respect for truck drivers. Yeah. Hard life they have. The conditions they work under. It's not nice. Pulling in late. Eating, sleeping in the truck. We got a room in um, behind uh, the petrol station, very basic rooms. We wanted a wild camp last night, but then the locals came and this, I don't know, they... Uh, the tribesman, a guy, in a, a guy in a tartan skirt. Um, yeah, and um, they were first friendly and then they, they said we must go and then he grabbed Well, we think, we think. Well, it was had to stick in there, but yeah. But he was smiling and laughing all the time. Maybe he was drunk. Which we... No, he didn't look drunk. But yeah, it was a bit confusing. No, lang no language. Mm. Yeah, and then? Then he grabbed my phone from the car seat when I went... To, which I left there when I wanted to close the sides of the car. Then I chased him. Then he ran away. And then he came back and bought the phone back. So I don't again, know la Again laughing about it. Yeah, so I don't know. I think he, he maybe the girls saw him do it and he, he knew that they would call on him and he couldn't switch the phone on. So yeah, I, it, I, he had regret. <laughs> we, we hope he had there regret. There was some regret, yeah. Yes. It's our first negative experience while camping, something we've, uh, we haven't experienced mm. before. Um, and we still don't really know what happened. Yeah, maybe they are bandits here or you wanted us to, it wasn't safe to camp there. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. don't know the story. Though. Yeah, let's presume the positive. Yeah. To Dawa Lodge, uh, uh, Hot Springs. Mm. We, are, we, we are trying to avoid um, all the heavy traffic and, and livestock. So this was a very nice drive. Back in the desert and it's very hot. You know, sweating. No club to pay for us. Yeah, and it's only 7 o'clock in the morning. People are cleaning the rooms behind us and we're going to have a short drive, only 200 k today, 34 yeah. hours and then um, tomorrow we to pushing four. pushing um, south. Mm. Hopefully we'll make Oma Valley the tomorrow or the day after. The day after? Yeah, and we're going to visit the uh, tribes. We've heard very mixed results. Mm. Some people say it's very commercialized and fake. You pay for pictures. You pay to see the ceremonies. Um, we're going to try and eat the market and see how the people come together. And hopefully we can have a natural interaction while paying for it. Yes. So we'll take you along Very the ride. natural. <laughs> Let's, uh, say order that again. a natural. We're going to order a, a natural ceremony. <laughs> yeah, a uh, natural interaction. And we'll take you along on the road. Discovered this gem of a place just south of Awash National Park. A great lodge and natural open air hot springs looking out on the park. There are five pools that vary slightly in temperature and lots of space to relax. It was a great place to take a break from the road and we would have stayed longer if we had the time. Our visas were only valid for three weeks in total so we had to push further south the next day. in the town of Turmi, a small town in the lower Omo Valley. It was a difficult long drive yesterday. And first there was a big boulder that, that rolled in, well there was a mudslide. And, <laughs> yeah, um, clogged up the road, yes. And then we drove up a pass. Well, which well sorry, first it was just good to see how the people <coughs> sorted it out themselves, got together. For us it sounded quite confusing, but it was sorted in about half an hour. Yeah, but they were already very busy when, when we there. arrived. Yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you um, how they did it. Quite ingenious, two sticks and a strap, right. yes, <laughs> and, and it was sorted. Then we ran into a road that stopped, being a, stopped being a road. Yeah, Google Maps, naughty. Mm. Um, 
So we had to turn around and then we thought we would have to drive back to Abramish. But luckily a taxi driver's taxi broke down and we could ask him another route which he gave us. But it was a long 280 kilometers. Yeah. So I think all day, all, all day driving for 280 kilometers and we missed the market in one of the villages we actually wanted to go and see. We wanted to go to a market yeah. to drive 280 kilometers to get there over yeah. two passes and then it was too late. Yeah. Love, real love. Yeah, so today we're heading into Hama Valley. Um, I wanted to go and visit a Hammer village that we couldn't find. Maps of Emmy. Well, we think they move. Yeah, the villages do, do move, so yeah, let's not blame the equipment. So tonight we're going to stay here and tomorrow there's a market here. Yeah, in, in that, yeah. that evening we found this great campsite just outside of town under the mango trees. It was only the third proper campsite that we stayed in while traveling through Ethiopia. The staff could not speak a word of English, but were very hospitable and helpful. The toilet facilities, like in the rest of Ethiopia, was quite rudimentary, but the scenery made up for that and so much more. Next morning we headed back into Turin to visit the weekly Hamar tribe market. I grabbed a haircut while we got to know our surroundings. The Hamar comes from all over the district to visit the market, sometimes walking for up to two days. They bring tobacco, honey, livestock, ochre and more to trade and sell. They still strongly cling to their traditions and customs. They have a very specific and very decorative dress code and hairstyles with a lot of meaning in their appearances. The ladies display necklaces that show their status and what number of wife they are. Unmarried men have a very specific dress code as well to show that they are bachelors and bride prizes are still a common practice. It is very common to see a goat herder in traditional dress with AK-47 assault rifle and bandolier over his shoulder, casually strolling through the mall. This morning we saw the river coming down. It was dry yesterday, so Perrine's quickly having a look to see whether we can pass because we have to get through. This is now our way back to Kenya. After Karin took an involuntary dip in the river, we decided to wait and see if anyone else crosses the river. We were soon told by a local that it, it is impossible. Then we asked around and found out that we needed to backtrack 90 kilometers and there we would find another road leading to Moyale and the border to Kenya. So today is our second last day in Ethiopia. Um, we will exit at Moyale tomorrow. Um, we entered Ethiopia on a rainy day and it seems like it's going to be the same when we leave. Um, so in a nutshell, is Ethiopia has been the most challenging for, for me personally, I think for me as well. Um, yes. We, we found interactions with, with locals, with, with individuals, very nice people are inquisitive, they want to know what we think of Ethiopia, South Africa, but, but traveling in Ethiopia in a car is ex it's challenging. It's um, very tough. Um, all the historical spots are quite far from each other, so the roads are full of livestock, animals, horses, goats, donkey carts, donkeys. Dead animals. Um, yeah, so it takes a lot of concentration driving here. Yeah. yeah, so so you would average maybe 200 kilometers in a full day's driving. Yeah, um, or, or we averaging I think about 50 kilometers an hour. hour. Yeah, um, the, road, the road itself, the surface is not so bad. It's more 
the, all the animals and people on the road. Oh, and tuk tuk and buses. I mean, you just let them pass you. Um, so my advice for somebody who wants to come to Ethiopia is fly in. Fly into Addis. Drive to Addis and then fly around. Fly, in the fly. Country. Yeah, of course. <laughs> The, the system as well has been set up to make it easy for tour operators to run tours and quite difficult for you to do stuff by yourself. Yeah. So you get hassled by kids, by people asking for money and sweets and everything and it actually spoils your trip and your visit to the village. We, for instance, today we didn't go to the village because we, we, we today we've had it. Um, Huh? Yeah, and um, the, the stuff I liked is quite a, uh, it's quite a different culture, so it was nice getting to know the culture. Yes. It was great to, uh, to drink to like a, a coffee, coffee. And, and people are very hospitable. Um, yeah, the interactions were with the adults, that's, that's not um, yeah. like touts, yeah. it's great. People will invite you for coffee, so they, they, will, they will have all these little coffee shops, and you have the, like the small cups. And then come have a copy, coffee, I'll pay for it. And then you chat about South Africa and Cape Town and where you're from. And, and that's nice. And uh, you know, then, then it makes my day. And then the next day it's just dead animals on the road again. So yeah. And, and, then, and we didn't see a lot of, a lot of unspoiled nature. No. Um, again, we wanted to go to Simeon Mountains, but you needed a guide. And we, we don't have space for a guide in our car, so we just couldn't go. So the whole setup is uh, set for tour well, operators. operators. Um, I think you will other get more value. Other travelers talk about uh, the tourist mafia, yeah. the way things have been set the, up. I, I think you will get your best value and best uh, experience, experience wise. It, it will obviously cost a bit more. Um, the food was great. And yeah, cheap. It's, it's not an expensive country to travel in. And the wine. Acacia dry red is really nice. Yeah, but we, we ate out more in the month in Ethiopia than I think in the whole trip. Yeah. Because the food in the restaurants is interesting, it's um, nice food for me, people like me, and it's affordable. Yeah. 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 So yeah. come to Ethiopia, don't, don't, don't stay do away. It. But um, yeah. Um, Fly. I think it's uh, do, 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 do it differently than, uh, than overlanding. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, and also there's not a lot of campsites. But, yeah. You know, yeah, there's, we, um, there's hotels and you can camp in the garden and some of them have made it a bit more comfortable but they, they're not geared for camping. For, for camping and overlanding. How many overlanding cars have you seen? None. I saw one. Two. Two. One that was parked and one driving. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. Tomorrow, it's hopefully, it's back into the desert, okay. uh, heading yeah. south. Lee. Yeah, Lee. on yeah. the west, on the east side of Lake yeah. Turkana. Yes. Our adventure continues next week when we head further south into Kenya and visit the Castle Forest Reserve at the base of Mount Kenya. There we camp for four days under a cloudy blanket next to the mountain. Thank you for watching our adventures. Please hit subscribe if you are not a subscriber already. Please slam the like button and share our videos with your friends. To get notified of new videos, click the bell icon. Thank you to all our patrons. You are the people that make these videos possible. To become a patron, go to patreon.com forward slash fearless on four wheels.